In this problem, we're told a man exerts a horizontal force of 125 newtons on a crate with a mass of 30 kilograms. A. If the crate doesn't move, what is the magnitude of the static frictional force? B. What is the minimum possible value of the coefficient of static friction between the crate and the floor? So we have this man, right? And so this man is going to be pushing right, this crate with 125 newton force. We also know the mass, of the, uh, the mass of the crate is 30 kilograms, right? So that's what we know. And so let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, we're trying to find... Um, the static frictional force, right? And so we're told if the crate doesn't move, what is the magnitude of the static friction force, right? So you can call this F sub S or F sub F, right? Frictional for like, so the frictional force of static friction, right? And so what we're trying to do is the way we're going to do it, right? Is so we know he's applying 125 Newton force, right? And it doesn't move. So that means the frictional force has to be the same force backwards, Right? And the reason that is, is because if it was less than that, it would, he would be able to push it forward. Right? But we know that there's got to be some force, right, which is the, uh, the static friction force, right, pushing back at it. So the static friction force is just going to be equal to the force that's being applied because it doesn't move. So this one you just really have to think through. It's just going to be 125 newtons. So there's not really any math for it. It's essentially you just have to know it's equal to the force being applied because it doesn't move. Right? So 125 newtons, that's going to be your answer to A. Now let's do B. So for B, we're trying to find the minimum possible value of the coefficient of static friction, right? So we're trying to find mu sub s, right? And so we know uh, we know uh, the static friction force, right? We know F sub s, which is 125 newtons. We know uh, mu sub s, right? And so if we want to relate those variables, we know, uh, right, the force of friction is just equal to mu sub s times F sub n, right? And think about this equation. We know this, right? We solved it for the last problem. And then F sub n, the normal force, we also know. Right, because we know it's just going to have a force mg, and since there's no other forces right in the y direction, it's just going to be equal to um, right. The normal force is just going to be equal to f sub n. Right, and the reason that is is if you take the sum of the forces in the y direction, right, it's going to be equal to zero because the box does not move along the y direction. Right, so zero is going to be equal to what are the forces in the y direction? We have f sub n going upwards, so it's positive, and then minus mg because it's going downwards. So f sub n is just equal to mg. Right? And this is something you should just be able to tell by looking at it, because it's the only force in the y. This one doesn't have a y component, so it's just equal to mg. So if f sub n is just mg, then we know f sub s equals mu sub s times mg. Right? And if we want to solve for mu sub s, if we divide both sides by mg, right, mu sub s is just going to be equal to f sub s over mg. Right? f sub s is just going to be 125 newtons divided by mg, so the mass of it is 30 kilograms. Multiply that by g, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And then just plug this in your calculator, right? You just do 125 divided by 30 times 9.8. You'll get 0.42517. So you can round this however you want. I'm just going to round to 0.43. So make sure you just round however you want. And then keep in mind, uh, right, static friction, the coefficient of static friction does not have units, right? Friction doesn't have units, so it's just 0.43. That's going to be your answer to B, so 0.43, and then your answer to A was just 125 newtons. But yeah, so these are your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.